Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I am Suresh Ramachandran from Bellwood Candy, Sri Lanka. And I have come with a series in which I envisage teaching the overall synopsis of the entire Bible. Why? You know, many people don't find it easy to read the Bible for reasons best known to them. Many Christians would love to read only the New Testament. Why? Because it's easy to understand. We already know the story of Jesus and the Gospels. And uh, it's small, just 27 books and short ones too. And uh, if at all we avoid something in the New Testament, it will be the book of Revelation because it's hard to understand. But many people don't like to read the Old Testament. Why? It's so complex, difficult, the language is not easy to understand, the stories are sometimes long and uh, completely uncontextual because we don't know where it's happening, what's happening, we don't know the culture, etc, etc. And if at all, we like to just read the book of Psalms. Why? Because all the 150 Psalms are so appropriable, so lovely, easy to understand, nice and very applicable too. You know, there is a lot of prayer in it, praise in it and a lot of joy in it and also melancholy in it. So it, it doesn't matter what state of mind we are, in what mood we are, in what sort of a situation we are. We can always go to the book of Psalms and find God talking to us. What about the other books? Especially when we hit 1st Chronicles. We hit the list of names that we can't even pronounce. You know, our tongues swerve. and You know, we, we, we can't remember those. We can't pronounce those properly. So, what about those? And then what about those scenarios? Things and transactions transpiring between people, but we don't understand. So many people avoid the Old Testament. Now, my dear friends, I am not here to teach you how to read the Bible. But I am here as your friend to help you start to be able to read the Bible in its context and make it a fun book. I'll tell you, this book, the word of God, is full of fun. You know, this is the Father talking to us. So it doesn't matter how old we are in God, how, how juvenile we are, how matured we are, it doesn't matter. Even if we are a very new Christian, God is still able to speak to us as our father to an infant because fathers can talk to infants and they can have a good rapport. Okay, now if, if you are a father and if you held your baby, the baby doesn't know to speak, but then you speak and the baby responds. Wow, the, the feelings is so, the feeling is so elative, it's, it's so wonderful. Okay, and this is like that. But then if you are somebody who, who have grown a little bit in the Lord, this book is a book for meditation, the, uh, a book for us to grow. You know, we can eat the spiritual food from this. But then if you are a deep, knowledgeable person, if you want to explore, excavate, go deep into the Bible, still, you know, this is a wonder book where you can go very deep and you can discover science, archaeology, history and when I say science you know you can go way back into the paleo world, paleontology, anthropology and you know what not. You know you, 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 you have everything here. So my dear friend it doesn't matter who you are and how old you are in God, how matured you are, this book is for you from your father, from your God. And this book, I'll tell you, 
This is a very primitive book, isn't it? This is very old. And yet, this is the most modern book that you can lay your hands on. And this is very spiritual. Why? Because this is the Bible, the word of God. It has to be spiritual. But I'll tell you, this is a very fun book also. I'll tell you, if you start reading the Bible the way you should, and if you start to understand the Bible, the Bible would make you throw all those modern elements that are making, bringing joy into your lives. L like the media, like the television. We watch television, we use Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, Twitter and Pinterest and what not. Why? Because we want to have fun in our lives. There is nothing wrong in having fun. But our God is a fun loving God. Our God is a happy God. Before I met this happy God, I was worshipping 330 million sad gods. I was a Hindu and I met Jesus 41 years ago and the more I know about Jesus, the more I know is that he is not at all like any of these other gods but a happy God and he is a fun loving God. Okay, And this fun loving God has given us this huge word and this word should contain fun. Okay. So my dear friends, let's have fun studying the overall synopsis of the Bible. Why? Because the Bible is huge. There are 66 books in the Bible divided into two, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So it's hard to read and remember. It's hard to read and understand. It's hard to comprehend and try to put into practice what the Bible says. You know what some, some Christians think? How can God be talking to us from what has been written here? I mean, there is a lot of history. And uh, of course, this is a Jewish book, isn't it? This book was predominantly aimed at the Jews. About 40, 44 authors were used by God to pen this book. And every one of them was a Jew. And the language in which this book has been written, Hebrew, the, the, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew with a little bit of Aramaic here and there, uh, and the New Testament in Greek. So we who read the Bible in English, who, who speak and think in English, we have a hard time understanding a Jewish book written by Jews to the Jews with a Jewish language and a context and a culture. And, and so primitive and old, uh, it's very, very, very difficult to appropriate this book into our lives. Is it? No. That's why I'm starting this little series in which I'm going to sit with you and together we will look at the synopsis of the Bible for us to be able to understand this Bible. Okay, my dear friends. Now, Let's go to the New Testament later in our series. Let's start concentrating on the Old Testament. The Old Testament has 39 books. How many of you all know the order in which the 39 books are written? Shall we give it a try? And if you don't remember, no worries. Today I'm going to compartmentalize the 39 books into five groups and I'm going to help you remember the books in their order. Okay, but before that, let's start from Genesis to Malachi. Let's count and let's see how far we can go. Okay, without looking at a list. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st Samuel, 2nd Samuel, 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, 1st Chronicles, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, 
Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, or Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, or Malachi, if you want to pronounce it that way. So, we know these are the 39 books. It is perfectly alright if you don't remember the names. I am going to divide these 39 books into 5 divisions. Okay. Now, these divisions were not divided by me, Suresh. No, 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 no. Who is Suresh to divide this? I mean, Suresh is nothing. Okay, this is divided by Bible scholars. I mean, I don't know when, but for ages and ages, these divisions have existed. And, and, and these divisions are wonderfully divided. Easy for us to learn. Okay, now... Let's get into some rhythm, okay? <coughs> 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. So the divisions are 5 books in the first division, 12 books in the second division, 5 books in the third division, 5 books in the fourth division, and 12 books in the fifth division. So it's 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. There we go. Easy. Fun. Okay, just like in the kindergarten. <laughs> okay. Hey, we, 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 we may be old, we may be mature, we may be professors, we may be having grandchildren. But then there's always this little kid in us. Okay, so let's have fun. 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. Now, these divisions are named according to the, the background of the book, the subject of the book. Okay? The first division, which has five books, is called the law. Later on in our series, I will explain the Hebrew word uh, for law and let's, let's go a little deep later. But for now, the first division contains five books and they are the books of law. Okay. So what are the five books of law? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. These first five books were written by Moses. The Holy Spirit inspired Moses to inscribe these five books. So these books are called the books of Moses or the law of Moses. Or there is a technical term, if you like technical terms, uh, there, there, there is a technical term called the Pentateuch. Penta means five, took is seen together. Okay, so Pentateuch, these, 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 these expressions are from the Greek, Pentateuch from Greek. Uh, so that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Okay, now the second segment contains 12 Historical books, their history, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st Samuel, 2nd Samuel, 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, 1st uh, Chronicles, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah and Esther, 12 historical books. The third division contains five poetical books, poetry, they are poetry. Later on in our series, I will explicate why poetry and how to understand poetry. That's later. But now, the, f the five poetical books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. Okay. The fourth segment, the five major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel and Daniel. The final, the fifth division contains 12 books which are called minor prophets. Why some prophets are called major and why some minor? Let's talk about them later. 
Now let's try to remember the final 12 books of the Old Testament, the Minor Prophets, starting with Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum or Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi or for some people Malachi. Okay. Now we saw the five divisions of the Old Testament. Now I want to take you to the original. Let's talk a little bit about the Hebrew Bible. Why? Well, what I'm going to explain to you may sound a little bit difficult to some of you. No worries, leave it. We are going to continue to study in English, read the Bible in English, praise God for English. God has given us many, many versions in the English. So whatever Bible version that you use, fine. Let's talk about these versions, English versions, later on in our series. Okay, I will give you uh, proper advice as to what version should you use depending on your spiritual maturity in the Lord and what version you should avoid. You know, are there any avoidable versions and if yes, why those things later. But let's just concentrate right now on the Hebrew Bible. Hebrew Bible the, the Old Testament was and is the original, right? God gave the Old Testament to the Jews, to the Hebrews in their Hebrew language. In the Hebrew Bible, there are only three divisions. And the Hebrew Bible is called the Tanakh. Say with me, Tanakh. T-A-N-A-K-H. Okay, or K. Tanakh. Some people want to spell it T-A-N-A-C-H. However, it's Tanakh. Okay? Now I'll explain why Tanakh. But before that, the Hebrew Bible is not divided into five divisions like our English Bible, but three. There are only three divisions. Tanakh has three divisions, which are Torah, Nebim, and Ketubim. Okay, now, B, B sound, in the Hebrew language, if the B, or the letter Beit, the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet, when it comes as the first letter of a word, the sound is B, as in our B. But every time this letter comes in the middle, it's not b, but it's v, with your lower lip tucked inside your mouth. It's v, like in the German Volkswagen, where the v is like a f. Here, the b is like a deep v, not the w w, but the v v. So, nevim. You can say nevim. If it is difficult, you can say Nebim or Ketuvim or Ketubim. Torah, Nebim, Ketubim. These are the three sections of the Hebrew Bible. Torah, T. Nebim, Ne. Ketubim, K. That's why it's called T, Ne, K, Tanak. See? It's easy. You will see the combination written on the screen, making it easy for you to understand. Anyway, even today, the Jews use the Tanakh or the Tanakh, Torah, Nebim and Ketubim, because that's their Bible. Now, they don't use the New Testament, unless, of course, they are Messianic, unless, of course, they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Why? Because for them, the Bible is the Old Testament. For us, the Bible is not just the Old Testament, but the Old Testament and the New Testament. We are God's children because of the New Testament. Praise God! In the Old Testament, the Word of God was given only to the Jews. The Jews were the chosen people 
and they were the ones who could uh, speak to God, hear from God and God dealt with them. But in the New Testament, John 3.16 says, For God so loved not just Israel, not just the Jews, but the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever, it doesn't matter whether you are Americans, whether you are English, whether you are Irish, whether you are uh, Cajun, whether you, whether you are Italian, whether you are Sri Lankan, it doesn't matter. Okay, Whoever believes in him shall not perish but hath everlasting life. So the New Testament comes to everybody even to the Gentiles like like me okay and then because of the New Testament we are brought in to the family of God where we become children of God we who were once dead in sin and trespasses were now are now forgiven by Jesus and we are now seated with Jesus as co-heirs in the kingdom of God so praise God for the New Testament uh, but, 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 but here is the analogy that I want to give you uh, to, to show you the relationship between the Old Testament and the New. Many Christians make a big error of dismissing the Old Testament just because we are in the New Testament. Of course we are living in the New Testament era. Praise God for the New Testament without which we could not have become children of God. But we cannot ignore or dismiss the Old Testament. Now, do you love trains? I do. I love trains. And uh, I love the, 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 the old steam trains. Fun, right? The sound, the, 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 the movements, the, the huff and the puff and the chuck chuck. Oh, that's all wonderful. Now, let's imagine a train with, an, with a locomotive and the carriages or cars in America. I would say the cars or the carriages of the train are like the New Testament. That's where we are seated, that's where we are in and it is the New Testament that is taking us to heaven. But the locomotive is the Old Testament. If there is no locomotive, you will be seated in a stagnant train, you will not move. So my dear friends, if for reasons best known to you, you are somebody who delves only in the New Testament, then you cannot move. If you are to progress, if you are to move, you need to allow the Old Testament to pull the train. Okay, But since we are not engineers, we are not the trained people, we are not the Jews, we cannot ride in the locomotive either. So yes, we need the Old Testament, praise God for the Old Testament, but we are not living in the Old Testament. That's what Paul says when he says, we are not under the law, we are under the grace. The law is the engine, the locomotive and the grace are the carriages and we are enjoying life in Jesus in the New Testament because of his grace. Although we have not ignored the law, we have not ignored the Old Testament because it is the locomotive that is pulling us. Okay, my dear friends, I will let you go now and I will come back with our next segment of this series. God bless you.